What's going on guys? Today, I have a bit of a treat. Um, I have been very lucky. Uh, we've got a great customer, name's Randy. Thank you, Randy. Uh, he brought in one of these Mongoose Motomax uh, to add to my collection. Uh, it's in really very restorable shape. Uh, the mags have no cracks in them and uh, really, really cool bike. I mean, it was made in November of 1978. So that's 42 years old. Uh, so in this video, which is late, I apologize. We're going to be servicing the rear hub on this. So this is going to be kind of like a two, uh, well, not a two part video. It's going to be uh, killing two birds with one stone. Uh, one, introducing the next project and two, show y'all how to service a Shimano style rear hub, Bendex, uh, something like that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and tear this hub apart and uh, get going. I hope you enjoy the video. Be sure to clean your work area. Put down a nice clean cloth. We're gonna get our wheel. And the first thing I like to do is I like to measure to see if the axle is even. So we're gonna measure this side first. And looks like this is about 31 millimeters. Or if you wanna go in inches, that's uh, 1.256 inches. I'm gonna check this side here. And this, there's a huge difference. There's about a half an, in, uh, half an inch difference in the axle. So let's even these out real quick. So I'm going to loosen this side I'm using an adjustable wrench because I don't have a handy wrench the size of this lock nut and I'm going to free this side so be sure to get a cone wrench and I'm checking a 15 and 15 is the wrong size so actually, I believe that this one is going to be a 17 millimeter. I was pretty sure it's a 17 millimeter, and it's not. Wow, it's a 19. So I'm gonna hold the cone wrench. I'm gonna hold the cone. I'm gonna break the lock nut free. I'm going to loosen. I'm going to back off on the cone on this side some. And then since this side over here is already broken free, I'm going to hold that side with my hand and I'm going to screw the axle in. 
which is going going to move the axle um, towards the short side. And then I'm going to just screw the lock nut down until it makes contact, and we're going to re-measure. So I'm going to get my calipers here. And I'm going to measure. I prefer millimeters, so we're going to switch it over to millimeters. And we are at 29.63. And we're going to go to the other side. And it's still a little short by four millimeters. So I'm going to back off on the long side some and then screw the axle in and then we're going to screw that back in and remeasure. Okay, we're at 27.62. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want it close. You know what, that is very close. So now, I'm going to lock the brake side down on this. Get it good and snug. Alright, now that the axle is centered in the wheel, we're going to loosen the lock nut. We're going to place the lock nut onto the towel. We're going to loosen the cone. We're going to put it next to the nut. We're going to try to keep everything in order. I'm going to remove the bearing. Be sure to play, pay close attention to how the bearing is placed in the hub because you're going to want to repeat it. I'm putting the bearing down on the towel in the direction that it goes into the hub. I'm going to unscrew the uh, clutch mechanism here. I'm going to put it there on the towel. I'm going to remove the bearing. I'm going to put it onto the towel in the same direction that it's going to go into the hub. Now this is where it gets a little more tricky. I'm going to flip the wheel over and I'm going to pull this arm out. And if you pay close attention, there are two like little keys here and inside the hub there are four brake pads on this one and there's two of them grouped together with a gap that's where one of the keys go and then another gap over here let's see if I can get you a little more light There's a gap there and a gap there. That's where the keys are going to want to go. So I'm going to place this onto the blue towel and I'm going to fish these brake pads out. And this hub actually looks pretty good. Pay close attention to how the brake pads are in there. These brake pads 
on this old Bendex is the same. It doesn't matter which direction it goes. However, on some of these coaster brakes, um, one side of the pad is has more of a hook onto it, and um, you want to make sure that it goes back in properly. Okay, and then we're going to fish the last piece the last piece out of the hub and then you can get a, a nice towel and you can clean it you can use mineral spirits you can use some diesel fuel um, I'm going to be using WD-40. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's what a lot of people do have. And let's see. Ah. So I'm gonna spray some on the towel. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some on some of these parts to let them soak a bit. We will be using a good grease to put it back together. Now be sure to remember which way this clutch mechanism goes in. Now that we've got these parts pretty clean, we can start to put them together. Before we put them together, you want to inspect the parts to make sure that there's no broken bearings. Um, you know, everything's pretty clean, nothing broken. Now, upon inspection, I did notice that this bearing here was actually missing one of the bearings. So we're going to find a replacement bearing to put in there, and we're going to put it in. Now, if I recall correctly, this is just a quarter inch bearing. Quarter inch. I like to use wheels manufacturing bearings. into place and inspecting the bearings to make sure there there's no damage to any of the other bearings all right we're good so what I like to do is I like to get a 
generous amount of grease on my fingers, or, you know, I do have a grease gun. And I'm going to get each one of these bearings, and remember, pay attention, you want, uh, I accidentally flipped the bearing upside down, but I do know how this is supposed to be. So I'm gonna get this grease gun, and I'm gonna shoot grease into the crevices of this bearing. And I am using the uh, Rock and Roll Red Devil Grease. And I do like the grease. It's a very smooth, very high quality grease. And we're gonna put them in, into the crevices. And then I'm going to shoot grease into bearing here. thing I don't like about this grease is it works so well that uh, the coaster brake doesn't work as well so um, if you're if that's going to bother you then use a little bit less grease whenever it comes to the uh, brake pads because we're going to be putting grease on there so I'm going to put a nice line of grease onto the bearing surface on that side and we'll put some grease on the other. You don't have to worry about the grease going anywhere because it bonds to the metal pretty good. And then I'm going to put some grease on the inside where the uh, brake pads are going to be. some grease. I want to thoroughly coat the inside of the hub with grease. Every bit. Alright, so now that we've got grease in the hub, I like to get grease onto the spiral here, onto the clutch mechanism. onto the bearing surface, just a little bit there. Okay, I'm gonna put some on the brake pads. On the back side. Okay. Smear it around. some in with this the threads on the inside there being very generous so we're going to pick up the wheel and there's a side with a smaller hole 
in a side with a larger hole. What we're going to do is we're going to get this clutch mechanism and we're going to drop it into the hub there with the tabs pointing up we're going to take one brake pad and we're going to slide the brake pad we're going to go next to the tab we're going to take this one and we're going to slide it directly next to the other brake pad um, in between the two tabs and then we're going to repeat it repeat it with the other brake pads next to the tab on the other side and then next to the tab it should fit in there thoroughly all the way all right and we're going to get the gear here and we're going to thread it into the other side after we put the bearing into it and on this bearing it said this side out and we're going to hold the clutch mechanism in place using my other hand and we're going to screw this into place and it locks into place if you feel so inclined you can shoot a little bit extra grease in there remember the more grease you put in there the less effective the coaster brake is going to be all right now you want to make sure that you get these tabs and you want those tabs to go in between the gaps on the brake pad so we're going to slide this in we're lining those tabs up with the gaps and it should just fall into place just like that do not move it we're going to flip the wheel over we're going to put some grease where the bearing surface is. We're going to place the bearing, bearing side down, into the gear. And then we're going to thread the first cone in. And this whole time I am not moving this arm on the other side of the wheel because I want, want it to stay in place. Once this cone makes contact with the bearing and then stops, then you can, it's safe to let go. All right, so now I'm gonna screw this lock nut into place. And it's called a lock nut because it locks the cone into place. This is the tricky part. This is what a lot of people have trouble with. So I'm gonna screw this in finger tight and I'm gonna feel the gear. It should have no play in the axle and you should feel very little of the bearing. You should feel a little bit of a, a small amount of notchiness, but if you'll notice this gear moves quite easily and so you keep playing with the cone and the lock nut until you get it where you want it. Now I'm going to hold on to the arm on this side. I'm going to hold the cone in place and I'm going to start to lock the lock nut into place just a little bit and then I'm going to feel how this is okay that's a little too notchy it's still 
The steel feels pretty good, but that's a little tighter than I'd like it to be. So while I'm holding the brake arm here, I'm going to hold on to the lock nut on the outside, and I'm actually going to loosen on the cone on the inside, which is going to actually loosen up the hub and lock it into place. And it's feeling pretty good. It's still a little tight, so I'm going to really lock it together by um, um, turning the inner cone there. I'm loosening it while securing the lock nut on the outside and I'm getting them good and locked together until I'm good and happy with this. So this turns easily and there's no play whatsoever. We're going to test the brake. Wheel stops nicely. I'm going to pedal it. Use the brake. Stops nicely. Bearings feel great. We're done. Now, you can keep messing with this side until you get the desired feel of the bearing. You may need to loosen the lock nut a little bit and then continue to back off on the cone if the bearings are too tight or if the bearings are a little loose, just tighten the cone in, the cone nut in, and then lock the lock nut on there. Keep going back and forth until you get the desired effect. All right, guys, here's the finished product. What we've got is the wheel spins easily. There's no play whatsoever in the wheel. Pedals forward great, and it stops great. This is a perfect job, and uh, I hope that this uh, is helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments below. If you have any suggestions on what you want to see next, please, again, the same thing, leave it in the comments down below. If you liked this video, please leave me a big thumbs up and check out some of my other videos just right here on the lower left hand side of the screen. And please subscribe to my channel up there on the uh, top left corner. Well, I really enjoyed making this video for you, and I really appreciate uh, uh, Randy for getting me this bike here. This is going to be a fun project, which we will be covering in a future episode. Well, um, I think that's it for this video. I will see you all on the next one. Thanks, guys.